So he's actually gonna call Redonda Vought. I would have never wanted something like this to happen to her. It worked. Okay, perfect. I was pretending I was an investigative journalist with my intro. Hello. Welcome, everyone. If you're live here, thanks for being here. Um, everybody who's watching it on replay, hello and welcome. I hope this is informative. I think this is a really, really important case um, that could have incredible repercussions down the line for everybody in healthcare. Um let me know if you can hear me, first of all. Um, and if you do hear screaming, I was just telling everyone in the chat that my I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old and things are they're just having a hard time, but their dad's out there with them, so they're going to be A-OK. -okay. Today, we're going to talk about Redonda Vaught. If you are watching this on the replay, we there will be timestamps, and we'll get to that. Like I'll leave them there in case you're just curious about one thing. Basically, what we are going to do is go through this entire situation and kind of talk about what it is what is a normal, like what could have happened, um, what did happen, who is kind of at fault for what, and what can we do better going forward, as well as a timeline of everything that happens, because it is very interesting um, who has tried to, there's been like cover-ups. And, you know, when I first heard about this story, so if you are completely unfamiliar, and it looks like about 67% of you in a poll said, no, you have never heard of this. So we'll kind of start from the beginning. If you're very new here, welcome. I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner and I have a lot of opinions and I like to share them on the internet. Um, thanks Aaron for letting me know you can hear us perfectly. That's excellent. So Redonda Vaught is a, um, registered nurse in the state of Tennessee. And in 2017, she made a med error and the med error, unfortunately cost the patient their life. Um, this is Redonda and she has since then there was a, um, the hospital did not take the, initially they tried to cover it up. We'll talk about that. There was a large span of time where nothing happened. And then all of a sudden everyone kind of like turned the tables and said, never mind, we're going to investigate this. And actually we're going to make it a criminal trial. And that is interesting because typically in healthcare, you have a civil lawsuit, um, you know, where you could come and say like, Hey, you owe us this much money for these damages. That is usually what happens in healthcare, whether you are suing a nurse, a hospital an NP, it is a civil lawsuit. You are not going after them criminally. They will likely not serve. They're not going to serve like jail time. This is going to be a fine, something where your liability insurance is going to kick in and help you. But this, they are suing her for a criminal activity. So they're basically saying like, you knowingly killed this patient. If this goes through, and this is why it's kind of such a hot topic, this will kind of set the standard for how can we try healthcare workers going forward? Um, and because so far, like I said, it's always been, oh, this is just, you know, um, a monetary basic thing. You can lose your license. Um, but like you've never gone to prison. Um, and this is opening an entirely new door of, Hey, this thing that you accidentally did at work could like literally ruin your life. So that's why this is a big deal if you're unfamiliar. Um, and let us dive straight in and we will investigate kind of 
the entire case going forward. I have made us, oh, first, I just did want to say the nurse Erica is a phenomenal resource for a lot of this. She is actually in Tennessee right now. So the court case is going on right now. The event occurred in 2017. However, it, because of the pandemic and everything, we have been kind of pushed back in terms of dates. So everything is going on right now. Um, uh, they did jury selection yesterday. Today was the first day where everyone was giving kind of their statements. The nurse Erica, I will leave her link down below. She's on TikTok and Instagram, and she is actually there and reporting on it. That's where I've gotten a ton of information as well as through different like random media sources. I will leave all of those linked in the description once this is over in case you are also interested in taking a look at this. Okay. So when did this all start? This all started December 26th, 2017. Um, Redonda was a, she's a registered nurse. She had worked on a neuro ICU unit for about two years. Um, she was on this day, like a, a helper nurse. So basically she was going to be someone, a resource that could hop around and between different units, whoever needed help, you know, you just need someone to do a procedure for you, give some extra meds. And she got a phone call that a patient was down in the radiology department and they were going, they were really anxious and they needed some sedation. Um, so she went and to go pull the medication for this patient. Now, let me show you, cause along the way, I'm going to kind of show you how all of this works. So you can kind of understand where all of this is coming from. So in an ideal world, we'll kind of compare, I guess, ideal versus what actually happened in an ideal world. Someone says, Hey, Liz, I need you to go give my patient this med. Now this happens. And sometimes you have to go to different departments like radiology to give medication. I personally hated this because radiology, they don't, you have to like bring everything with you. Radiology doesn't have necessarily all of the stuff. And it sounds like in Redonda's case, this was the exact same thing. You're going to be having to go down there. You're going to have to monitor them. You are, you know, you don't have all the supplies getting a second checker for like, if you have to waste the med is just a total nightmare. So I hate it when I had to go down and give my patients med in radiology, but it happened a lot because people get anxious during like MRIs and things like that. So she was called down to go do that. She goes in and she goes to get the medication out of an Omni cell. So in case you are not familiar, medications for most patients um, in hospitals are locked up in something that kind of looks like this. So this is an AccuDose, AccuDose, Omnicell, um, Pixis. These are all kind of names for the same thing for this holds all the medication. You can see on the pink dot, that is where you are going to pull up all your patient information. The yellow dots are where the medication is stored. And the orange is the scanner where you can scan meds and almost all all modern ones have, I think this one's a little older, have a fingerprint. So you identify yourself, you log in and it pulls up your patient information. So you would log into your OmniCell like um, Renanda did. And she pulled it up and you would get greeted with a list of your patient's names. So she would have typed in her patient's name to say, hey, where is my patient? By the way, this is all off of their website. This is not like HIPAA. This is, I went to um, AccuCell's actual website and just pulled this off of a YouTube video. Um, so we don't have to worry about HIPAA. It comes up with a bunch of patient's names. You would then pull, like pick the patient and then you would be given something like this, where it would show you the medication. It would show you a whole list and then it would tell you, Hey, this is where it is. The drawer would pop out. And let me see if I have, I think I have a picture. Nope. I don't have a picture of the drawer. A drawer would pop out and it would show you all of your, like the little hatch would open and you would be able to access the medication. It would tell you what it is. It would tell you, Hey, check the expiration date. It's in, in this case, cabinet one drawer two, there's 10 left. Um, it's telling you up here, Hey, this is Coumadin also known as Warfarin. It's giving you both names. We'll talk about that in just a second. And here's the order 2.5 milligrams root PO frequency QHS. So at bedtime, this is what you would expect to find if you had a patient's information and it was talking. So the electronic health record is talking to the Omni cell. They're talking. They usually do in the perfect world. And you can go in, you can be like, this is the medication you need. Yes. That's exactly what nurse Susan told me to go grab. I'm going to pull it. It's going to have the dose. This is going to be perfect. Voila. Here we go. In this case, Redonda went to the Omnicell. Uh, I'm, if I say Omnicell, the hospital I worked at called it an Omnicell. Omnicell, like I said, AccuDose, Pixis, they're all basically the same thing. She went into the thing and she typed in um, the patient's name 
And this medication didn't come up. The patient was agitated. Like I said, she was really anxious and they had ordered two milligrams of Versed. So Versed is a medication that causes you to be more relaxed. Um, they had that, she pulled up the name and there was nothing under the patient's med list. If that happens, it, which it can happen, you would then have the decision of, um, am I going to call pharmacy? Am I going to like, what is the issue here? Have they just not updated the med list? Have they, is this like a glitch? What is going on here? So in the perfect world, you would just kind of call pharmacy and you'd be like, Hey, I had a order for two milligrams of Versed. Um, you know, it's not in the Pixis yet. What can we do about it? And they'd say, Oh, let me verify it. Let me verify it. Cause what happens is as a provider, your provider goes in and they enter into the computer. They'll type in, Hey, I need two milligrams of Versed, um, put it in. What happens then is it goes to the pharmacist electronically. So it goes into the electronic record of the pharmacist. The pharmacist has the whole hospital, right? So they are dealing with like a lot. So this isn't necessarily their first priority to go and get patient 477, like their, make sure their Versed is approved right away. As soon as they do approve it though, and they make sure, Hey, this doesn't interact with anything else. They click their approve button. And that is when the order goes to the Omnicell or the Pixis. Sometimes you can see it before and it'll say like locked, but a lot of times it won't show up on your patient's menu in the Pixis until they have done this step in emergencies this, you can override this. And I'm going to share a story at the very end of this, of how like this literally, this could have been me. It, I have about a medication error that I made that could have ended up in a very similar way. Um, I was very fortunate that it didn't, it got caught, but this is something that can happen to anyone. I feel like a lot of people have come out in the, about this and been like, well, how dumb is she that this happened? Like, Having been in a very similar situation, it wasn't the severity of the medication wasn't the same, but the way that I have, I have created a med error is the exact same way. So I have a lot of sympathy for her because it's chaos. So in this case, going back to this, Redonda goes, this is more of, um, like in an emergency, you have the ability to override and say, Hey, I know this is not approved by pharmacy. I know this order doesn't even show up in this computer yet but I need it and I'm going to pull it. You can do that. Um, and you, you have to give like a reason. And at the end of your shift, there's going to report be like a report that prints out. And usually you have to sign off on it or your charge nurse has to sign off on it and say, why, why did you force this medicine out? That is there as a safety feature so that, um, if you are in an emergency situation, if you're in a code, if you are in, um, your patient is seizing something like that, and you need to pull this med and maybe it's a verbal order. Maybe, you know, the provider is just like, I need you to go get me a milligram of a Valium, whatever, like right now, go get me five of Valium there's no time to put it in order. You can just pull it out and go and get it. So it is a safety feature. However, it removes all of the built-in safety things, which is when the electronic healthcare record talks to the computer, verifies everything is safe and that you're pulling out the right thing. So we have the situation where she's sitting there and she decides that, oh, this patient is anxious. Um, I am going to, I'm going to override the med. So I'm not going to wait for a pharmacy um, to verify this or do whatever. I am going to pull it. Another thing that contributed to this is their electronic record. So she worked at Vanderbilt Medical Center in Tennessee. Their electronic medical record was switching over to Epic. So Epic is a very common um, electronic health record. That's where you put in all the orders. That's where you chart. Theirs was switching over. So it was having a really hard time talking to their Omnicell because things were just confusing. I have lived through this. My healthcare system switched over to Epic while I worked there and it did. You had to override almost every single med for like a good week until the two learned to communicate with each other. And it was just, it was awful. So she is saying that this had happened. A lot of other nurses have corroborated and said, yes, you were having to override a lot of meds because the two weren't talking to each other. So whether it was because the order hadn't been verified by pharmacy or because it was too quick or that they just weren't talking to each other, for whatever reason, Redonda decided that she was going to override the med and pull it out. So she also had a student uh, preceptee with her, which is interesting to note, mostly because it just kind of, 
that's one extra layer of like, you're kind of distracted, right? So they always teach you in school, whatever, like don't talk while you're pulling out all of these different things because you're distracted. And having a preceptee is definitely going to be something that's going to be like a little bit distracting. So what was ordered was Versed. Um, when she went into the computer system and along the way, like there is going to be, I don't want to play a huge, like, oh, this is so-and-so's fault. And this is so-and-so like, I think we'll just kind of go through and say, Hey, this is, you know, yes, there's blame here. Yes, there's blame here. But I wish right now that we weren't looking at it criminally. We are because that's a criminal case that she's going through. Um, but rather as a learning situation. And we will touch on that. So I will kind of like point out different things of like, yeah, that was probably not the best call. Um, and she's about to make her first, in my opinion, huge, like, this is a big, like, Oh, dang it. But a very understandable, Oh, dang it. Because as you'll see in my story, I have done a very similar thing. So Redonda goes in, she's like, okay, two milligrams of Versed. She goes into the computer and just like you would be thinking you type in V E R right for Versed. The problem here is we have brand name medication and generic name medication. And this I think is a first huge thing that we need to fix in all of healthcare across the board as a safety measure, because this gets very confusing. So in case you are unaware, all medication has two different names. We have the brand name for it. And then the generic name, the brand name is going to be Tylenol, um, like Advil, things like that. The generic name is acetaminophen. And that's the actual drug acetaminophen ibuprofen. These are used interchangeably. There is no, and some names we always call by their brand name. Some names we pretty much always call by their, um, generic name. Versed is almost always you like almost always referred to as Versed, but Versed is actually the brand name. Midazolam is the generic name. It's kind of a rough one. That's probably why everyone just has Versed. When you are going into a Pixis system, a, any kind of Omnicell, um, thing like that, you type in the generic name because brand names are not necessary. Like they change so much. There's going to be a million different ones. So to keep it simple, when you go into these programs, you are always supposed to type in just like when you're ordering medications, you are always supposed to type in the generic name. When you go into these systems, you're always supposed to type in the generic name, which again, gets very difficult. If that's not what you hear all day long is Versed, 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 then you have to remember, oh yeah, that's actually midazolam. This leads to a ton of problems and a ton of confusions. Patients are confused. My patients in primary care and in the hospital were always confused. They're like, you told me I was taking like, um, Synthroid, but this is actually levothyroxine. And like, what is this? And you're like, oh yeah, there's two names. Um, you know, oh, I'm going to prescribe you Zoloft. They get sertraline. They're like, what is this? You're like, oh my gosh, it's the same thing. It's stupid. We need to do away with this entirely. But Redonda goes to the machine. She types in V E R for Versed. She should have typed in M I D, but she didn't because, and this happens all the time. I have done this countless times. You go in and you type, start typing in something. And then you realize, oh, wait, no, 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 that's the, like, I need to type in the generic. The unfortunate thing in this situation is she typed in V E R or V E and what came up instead of Versed, um, which is a sedative Vecuronium came up and that is a paralytic. The difference between these medications, um, Versed being a sedative Versed is going to chill you out. Um, we use this all the time for conscious sedation in, um, I mean, both jobs that I've had as a nurse, you, it just makes you, that's the one where you give it to people and they just start like saying all these really fun things. And you're like, oh my gosh. And everyone starts talking about how much they love. Like they're like, no wonder this is illegal. This is great. And you're like, okay, great friend. Um, that's when people record you and do all of those things. Cause you're just, you do not care. And you usually don't remember what is happening. You know, conscious sedation you're fine. You can breathe. You can function. Typically when you give this medicine, you just do vitals a lot more. You're checking oxygen. You're checking blood pressure. You are checking to make sure that like, you're fine. You know, it has a little bit of respiratory depression, but really like I, you're not that worried about it. You know what I mean? It's one of those where you chart, you have to pull up and do like the excessive charting, but in reality, like they're going to be totally fine. That is not the case with Vecuronium. Vecuronium is a paralytic and that is a medication I have never given it. Um, cause I never worked in a, I worked in like a intermediate unit, but never an ICU and never an OR. So that is going to paralyze you. That is going to stop your 
neuron, your nerves from talking to your muscles. Um, so it is going to stop your biggest muscles, which are going to be your heart and your diaphragms. You are going to stop breathing and your heart will stop. Um, that is obviously tragic. And that is what she pulled up. Um, there are typically, so that is a, you know, and she has admitted this. Redonda has said very openly, this was my mistake. I should like, I should not have done that. Um, but I also just want to point out that this should never be something that is so confusing where you could go in and type in, why do we have two names? We need to resolve that entirely just like as a profession. So she goes in, she pulls this up. Now, typically when you are pulling a medicine that is like super hardcore, um, the acu or the acudose will check in and say, Hey, <laughs> you're about to give something like real, real powerful. Um, for I've given all sorts of very interesting things. We're having worked with like, um, just infants that are going to need, you know, when you're like detoxing them off of certain things, you're going to be giving all sorts of interesting substances sometimes to these babies. And it'll tell you like, Hey, you're about to like, do you, do you know what you're about to give to this baby? And you have to say like, yes, yes. And you're hitting buttons like this where you're like, please just like, yes, like alert, alert, alert. Typically this would show up, um, under when you're pulling something like vacuronium, it's like, Hey friend, you're about to like do something. I hope you have a breathing tube nearby. She claims that this does not come up. Her preceptee also claimed that this does not cut come up. And um, that seemed to be like, that's, you know, she does not remember that happening. This is something that could happen if like the EHR was down. We have no way to prove if it happened or it didn't happen. Um, but the point was she pulled it out. She drew up the medication um, and she went down to radiology. Now, the second issue that we are going to encounter here is when she goes down to radiology to give the medication to the patient, she looks for a scanner. So remember with our AccuDose, we have these scanners because every single vial is going to have a scannable label on it. Now, typically when you are at the bedside or wherever, you're scanning the patient's wristband, beep, you're scanning the patient's med. And if you scan, either, like if those don't match up or the order is not the correct or the order expired or your dose is off or something, it's going to give you a huge warning message. And it's going to say, whoa, there, friend, like you are, that is not what this person has ordered. Um, again, you can override it, but that would be a situation where, it, I mean, you would immediately see, it would be like, oh my gosh, why are you trying to do this? But she went down to radiology and they didn't have any scanners. She went to several different people and she asked, Hey, do you have any scanners down here? And they said, Oh no. So this was another area of immense issue. Like she has not been, I promise you, because I have run down to radiology many times to give, um, like we've given a lot of benzodiazepines of just like to help people calm down when they're down in radiology. And ours also did not have a scanner. Um, and we ran into all sorts of problems, especially if you had to like waste medicine and then like you were the only nurse. Cause sometimes if you're not using the whole dose, you have to waste part of it, but that requires two finger sign offs, like someone to double check it. And this was such an issue at my institution. So I have no problem at like thinking that this was an enormous issue also at Redonda's because if you don't have scanners down there, like we didn't, you're kind of just like fingers crossed. You don't have computers down there either. So it's not like you can check, like pull up the order again and like, make sure she wrote it down on a piece of paper and that's what she was going off of. So again, yes, there's also like, she should have looked at it. She should have examined it more. She has admitted that she did not check it enough, like the actual vial. However, the hospital also should have provided a few more steps here so that this wasn't so easy. Hang on. I need a drink of water. So she goes down there. She asks, Hey, do you have scanners? They say, no, she gives the medication IV push, um, which you would do. You can give, um, you can give Versed midazolam IV push. I, I mean, I'm assuming you can probably give Vecuronium IV push, but only if you're about to intubate someone in the OR and like you want their muscles in their neck to relax. So it's like easier and you're about to help them breathe for them. Not if you're about to leave, she gives the medication, um, she goes and she asks, uh, radiology, Hey, do you want me to stick around and monitor? This was also something that she should have just stuck around and monitored. She was busy and she was being asked to go to the emergency room. So this is just another thing of she's being pulled in 12 million directions. She's being asked to do this other thing. So she asked radiology, radiology, the 
techs in radiology, they don't have any authority to be like, Hey, yeah, can you like, no, you can leave. She should have just known I need to stay. Um, but if that wasn't expressly what she was told, like, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, Oh, if you don't know, you don't know. Um, but also you would like, I would, you know, when this gets held up in court, they're going to hold it against, is this a reasonable decision? And I think most people on this count at least would say like, no, like you should have stayed. I think most people would know I'm giving this respiratory depression, this medicine that's going to cause respiratory depression. Like I should probably stay with you, at least put a pulse ox on you for like 15 minutes, make sure you're fine. Watch your heart rate. Um, but she, she asked, Hey, is it cool if I leave? Do you want me to stick around? And they said, no, no, it's fine. We've got this. So she goes, she and her preceptee go to the emergency room to go help out in the ER there while she is in the emergency room, um, helping out there. She hears overhead a call for code blue in the radiology suite. Um, when she's done with the ER, she goes and she goes back up to the unit to figure out, like to hear more. She's like, cause you know, when your patient is in a unit and you're like, huh, I have like my patients in IR and that's where the code is kind of goes back. Um, people are talking about it. They are working on the patient by the time, you know, they've taken them back up. They're working on her. Um, they're coding her and she immediately asks like, Oh my realizes like, Oh my gosh, this is the patient. Um, the patient's nurse comes to her and says, what did you give? She looks at the bottle and immediately realizes like, Oh my gosh. Like she realizes, Oh my gosh, I gave back your This is not for said knows what it is. So she knows what has happened. Um, she gives it to the nurse and goes and tells the charge nurse. So like at this point, I feel like she's done the very difficult thing in this moment. Um, and she tells the truth and she immediately notifies everything, which I cannot imagine how hard that would be to go and have to say, you know, to a team that is working in an active code and be like, I know what happened. I gave a paralytic instead of a sedative, um, because you just know your entire world, like that is not good. So she goes, she tells the code team more water. She goes and she tells the code team, Hey, this is what happened. She goes and she tells like the charge nurse, everyone is notified. Um, and unfortunately, despite everything that they were doing, um, the patient passes away 24 hours later, she had been admitted for like weird, <coughs> sorry, neuro things. And let me see if I have a mint. Hang on one second, please pause. I don't want to have to keep like stopping and chugging water. So I'm going to text my husband and see if he can bring me a mint. Can you bring me a cough drop or mint? Brief interruption. Thank you. All right. We'll get something to fix my cough. I was sick forever ago. And I now I just can't speak for more than 10 minutes without hacking up my lung. Okay. So where were we? Oh, she told them the patient unfortunately passes away 24 hours later. So we are on here. We're caught up December 27th. Um, the patient has very unfortunately passed away. January 3rd, um, Vanderbilt decides that they're going to fire Redonda. This is not like shocking to anyone. Um, this was, you know, and she has cooperated with them. I think, like I had said, she has done pretty much everything right since the point that she realized her error. She has cooperated. She has told everyone, you know, like, this is what has happened. This is what is going on. Um, and she has worked with them. I don't think anyone was surprised that she got fired. Um, you know, this was, this was a pretty big oops. Um, in cases like this, your hospital almost always is going to terminate you in the case of, um, a loss of life, at least in my experience, someone let me know in the chat if this is not, uh, <laughs> true, but they're usually going to at least get rid of you so that it's like less of a liability. So they fire her. Um, and then on January 10th, so what, 10, 13, two weeks after the event, Vanderbilt settles with the patient's family. Um, so this is interesting. So basically what happens in a settlement is you have the hospital saying, Hey, we're going to pay you a lot of this, like whatever, an undisclosed sum of money. And, um, you're never going to talk about this. 
And that is what happens almost all the time in hospital cases. That's what happens a lot of the times when patients sue is the hospital just says like, Hey, Hey friend, we're just gonna, let's just, let me throw you a couple of these and uh, let's pretend this never happened. Okay. Very, very rarely do these things actually go to a court. They obviously are right now as we are seeing. Um, so that is where, do you want me to, oh, I locked the door to keep my children out. And now my cough drops are outside. Let me tell him. No, oh, it's okay. I'll get up and get him if I need him. Back on track. Vanderbilt pays the family. They say, please don't tell anyone. Hoping, I'm sure, that this will just go away. Because this is not going to be a good look, right? This is not going to be something. This is not something that Vanderbilt wants pre like put all over the news, right? That like, oh. This <laughs> like, Hey, look, like this is happening. Um, look at what happened at our hospital, blah, blah, blah. Nope. Hospitals do this all the time. Things happen. No one ever hears about them though. Most of the time, because as you notice, like no one has really been notified yet, right? This has happened, but we're not really talking about it to anybody. Um, because they're paying people off. This happened all the time at the hospital I worked at. Um, I have been involved in several or have known of several things that, just went straight to like, Hey, we're getting paid. So it's never hit the media. And I think this is very interesting because a lot of people have no idea about how much really does get just paid off by hospitals. It's a lot. And, um, perhaps is something we need a future video about. Um, so that happens. Let's fast forward. So that was January, January 10th. They pay them off. October 3rd rolls around. And someone tells CMS. So something that should have happened quite a while back was when you were a hospital and someone has a fatality due to an accident, the hospital is supposed to tell the powers that be of like your federal and your state government, you know, CMS, you're supposed to tell there's a reporting system to say, hey, this terrible accident happened. It was not good. Um, but it did happen. Let's see what we can learn from it. That's ultimately the goal is what corrective steps are you going to put in place so that this never, ever happens again? Do we think Vanderbilt did that? No, because they paid someone off and said, everyone shut up, which worked until October 3rd, 2018, when an anonymous tip was sent to CMS. So that's center of Medicaid services about the situation and Medicaid came and they are, they pay the hospital a lot of money. So hospitals get paid oodles and oodles of money, um, from uh, CMS. They are a prime person who pays them, you know, who pays a lot of their bills and, um, it's a lot of their budget. And they come in and they say, Hey, Vanderbilt, we noticed that this happened. Like we heard that this happened and, um, you didn't tell us about it. In fact, you didn't tell anybody about it. And if you don't immediately come out and talk about this and tell us what your plan is to fix it, you're not getting any more of our money to which Vanderbilt said, we like money. Okay. We'll deal with it. So they didn't even want to touch the topic. They were just willing to let it all go under the rug until they were told that they were going to lose all of their money, in which case they rapidly said, oh, shoot. OK, well, we need to come up with another plan. October 23rd, so 20 days later, everyone now knows about this, right? So this is starting to get picked up in the news because like no one had known about this before. So the Tennessee Department of Health, that's where their board of nursing is. Um, they decide they hear about this now. So again, they haven't heard about it before because no one, no one had admitted anything. So they come out and they say, we are not going to charge Redonda Vaught with anything. We're not going to punish her. We're just going to kind of say like, oops, <laughs> moving on. Um, because they saw it. I'm sure like this has happened before. They probably saw it as like, this is a horrible, tragic med error. You know, she was very, very up, like, I am so sorry. I am horrified. Um, she has said many times um, in the initial clip there, I kind of showed like she said, this is, you know, just immense regret, obviously about this. This was not intentional. This was in no way, you know, they kind of saw that. And I think they were like, okay. So they kind of said, okay, it's fine. We're not going to do anything about this. November, 2018, um, Vander, the CMS. So this was still like not too exploded. It was kind of just like 
CMS had told Vanderbilt. So Vanderbilt knew, knew that they knew the Department of Health had been notified because that's what happens when like, you know, the hospital has to, Vanderbilt has to make this corrective action plan. And then on November, 2018, CMS then releases the details and Vanderbilt submits their corrective action plan. So this is when CMS comes out and like publicly says, Hey, world news stations, guess what happened here? And that's when it becomes a little bit of a different issue. February 4th, 2019. Um, they decide that Redonda is going to get charged with criminal offenses. I think this is the state charging her with criminal offenses, which I do not understand. I looked into this so long, far too long into the night last night. If anyone knows who is the one that actually like who initiated this from everything I found, it was like the department of health and the state that was criminally charging her with these offenses after this release from CMS and all the uproar about it. So that happens. And then on March 27th, 2019, these same state investigators who I think are doing the criminal offenses, they allege 10 errors were made by Redonda. So these 10 errors are more of the civil things, right? So we had originally said that we have the two criminal charges that she is being charged for, oh, which we didn't even talk about what they were. Let's look at what they were. So the two criminal charges that they are currently, like she is currently in trial for right now is reckless homicide. I didn't know what that was because I'm a nurse and not a lawyer. So reckless homicide is a crime in which the perpetu perpetrator was aware that their act or failure to act when there is a legal duty to act creates significant risk of death or grievous bodily harm if in the victim, but ignores the risks and continues to act or fail to act and human death results. So this is saying that she was aware I do not think that she was aware. So I just do not understand how they are charging with her with this. And that is what is so horrifying. That is, if this passes, then they're going to, I feel like they're just going to be able to come out and tell a whole bunch of healthcare workers like, Hey, you, you, you get reckless homicide. You purposefully knew it. And it was like, no, this was obviously an accident. And the other thing she was um, cited with was reckless homicide, which is a crime in which the perpetrator, oh no, impaired, oh. I copied it wrong. The other one was um, impaired adult abuse, which that one is interesting because that one was kind of like almost like elder abuse um, in that it is when you are someone is 18 or older and you're taking advantage of someone who is either physically, um, emotionally or cognitively impaired and can't make decisions. So like she was obviously like very anxious. And I think they're saying that like it was abusive to give her this medication, even though obviously it was an accident. So I don't really know where they're coming from on that one. So those are the two criminal charges that she's getting right now. But they did also come out on this day and say that they just give you a little bit of a spoiler. If you learned, looked ahead, it's the biggest bombshell is about to come up. Uh, March 27th, they came out with 10 errors that were allegedly made that she was going to be investigated for. And these are more of civil things of them saying, Hey, this is more of a normal lawsuit where you're going to get fined. You know, all of those are going to be associated with a fine. They'll throw, they think there's 10 mistakes that she made there. Um, and they're basically just like alleging that they're throwing that out there and they're selling the department of health. We think you should investigate this and we think you should charge her with this. But remember the department of health had said, Hey, <laughs> we're just going to forget this happened. Like, let's just, let's just let it, let it go. That was their choice. However, a few months later, um, through whoever knows, maybe they've talked about it. Maybe people are just very grumpy. But somewhere between March and September, the Tennessee Department of Health reverses their decision and decides to pursue disciplinary action. So they're now saying, OK, you've been criminally charged and uh, you got these 10 things that people think you have messed up with. We changed our mind. You know how we told you that this is done and all wrapped up. We have changed our mind and now you need to come back and we are going to criminally investigate you now or we're going to investigate you now. And that's when they sit down and they look, can you still have your nursing license? Are you going to be fined? Is X, Y, and Z going to happen? This is what they're looking at here. Um, so then they, they change their mind. So can you imagine how stressful and just how life she, Redonda had gone on and she had taken a non um, clinical nursing job. So she wasn't doing like necessarily as much patient interaction, but this I mean, I am sure that this has just emotionally destroyed her, um, just absolutely destroyed her. And she's probably thinking like, okay, I'm 
trying to work through this. At least I'm not losing my livelihood and all of this stuff. Like I can at least put that part behind me. And then they change their mind. You're like, are you kidding me? Um, next year. So all of this kind of gets thrown out there and they say, oh, we're going to look into all of this. And then Rona happened. 2020, 2021, it gets the, so everything gets delayed. All of this was going to be investigated in like 2020, 2021, but obviously that happened. July 22nd, 2021, Redonda has her disciplinary hearing with the Department of Health in which her nursing license is revoked and she is fined because she is found guilty of three civil penalties. And those three civil penalties are one. So remember how they had 10, she ended up getting fined with just with three of them. Um, so they, she they decided she failed to verify a med. Very true. Failed to monitor a patient after she was, after she gave the med. True. We talked about that too. Three, it failed to chart a nursing intervention. Um, so there must have been some lack of like communication, some kind of charting, something like that. Um, but these are the three. And I mean, at least I think the first two and probably the third, they fit in a normal thing. You would, yes, you get a thousand dollar fine for each of these. So she has a three thousand dollar fine. Like, OK, normally this is where it ends. Normally this is kind of like gets her license taken away. I'm kind of like. Let's do a poll actually. Hang on. Let's see. Do you think, um, that she should lose her license over something like this? I'm kind of torn with that. I think that we need a better solution other than just like yanking people's licenses. Like maybe there's a different option where you have to go to some kind of remediation. Obviously someone died. So this is a very big deal, but at the same time, like it was a mistake. And do we really cut off someone's entire career, because of a mistake. So let's ask, should she have lost her nursing license? And she lost her license um, in, so there is a poll in the chat if you would like to vote. Um, it's anonymous, so no one will see your vote. There, if she lost her license in all 50 states. So they said, we're pulling it and you can't get this anywhere. That was kind of honestly, like, like I can sort of see where they're coming from on that one. Like I said, I, I wish we had a different way to go about it, but like, okay, I get it. Um, however, if you make a mistake, like, do you really deserve to lose that? So I'm very torn there, but that's not really what we're arguing about. So they said, okay, so we're fining you losing your license and you owe us $3,000 as well as all of our court fees. So all of this, um, you know, whenever you are taking someone into the court to have all of these decisions made about you, it's very, very expensive. And they said, so you have to pay the court fees as well, which is not supposed to exceed $60,000. So that's all pretty um, life alteringly awful. Um, if someone is like, hey, uh, you have to pay $60,000 now. Also, you don't have a job and you can't get a job because we won't let you. So that's kind of tying people's hands and seems a little bit unethical, but that's not even what we're talking about today. Cause in the grand scheme of things, that's nothing, absolutely nothing. So this happens. And then we're here. We're caught up friends. It is March, 2021. We are in a criminal trial. Um, and this is a really, really big, hot mess. So the biggest thing, um, that kind of, before we just start chatting and I'll go through the chat that we can talk about is this, if this becomes criminally tried, I think it is very likely that this will only make the profession more unsafe. Because if you are telling people you're going to go, you're going to be um, charged with reckless homicide if you make a mistake, like you're having a bad day, you make a mistake, um, and you could get a felony, like, or, and go to prison, like, Who's going to want to work in the profession? First of all, I think this could be applied all over the place. And also there's something called just culture. So this is something that the ANA, the American Nursing Association had made a statement about way back in like 2010, um, talking about just culture concepts and its use of healthcare to improve patient safety. And what this basically is, is about making incident reports. So if any of you work in healthcare, you know, if something happens and a mistake happens, or even a near miss, you file an incident report. And the point of that is not to be punitive. It is not to punish people. It is to say, Hey, 
the fact that I was able to make this error means that there's probably a systems problem that we can fix so that the next person won't accidentally do it because we are flawed humans. We're going to make mistakes. So let's make it as hard as humanly possible to make those mistakes. That is why the electronic record talks to the Pixis or the, um, Omnicell. That is why you have to scan medicines now. That is why all of these different things that were not in place here for Renanda, like that is why those things are in place to try to make it so that these errors do not happen. And that is the whole goal of the just culture thing is to say like, Hey, we're trying to remove blame. This doesn't happen perfectly. Um, I have worked on units that had a really good culture around this and then a really bad, but the idea in the perfect world is if you come clean, like she did, if you just admit what you did or what you almost did, um, let's learn from it and let's not attack you as a human because we can learn from this. We are, no one is perfect. Everyone is going to make mistakes. Let's learn from them and make everything safer. And if you charge someone with a criminal offense, hello, no one is ever going to report anything ever again. So I do not, do not understand what they are doing there. Um, so 72% of you at this point are saying, no, you do not think she should be held. Um, she should lose her nursing license. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll end, we'll end our poll. Um, let's see, did it end it that? Yes. Um, and then we'll do one in just a few minutes of like, what do you think of this entire thing? Um, so that's kind of where that's where that's sitting. That's why I think this is a horrible thing. That's why I personally think that there's no way she should be tried criminally. I guess let's, we can open up in that poll. And then I will tell you my story of how I think it can happen to pretty much anyone, uh, which is probably biased because it very much almost happened to me. Do you think Redonda should be convicted of reckless homicide. We're just going to do that one because, um, I don't understand the, the abuse of an adult one. I'm like, I don't know necessarily where you're even really coming from with that. Um, Abby, I agree with Liz, the repercussions of this would set back improving the system. Absolutely. Um, so personal story time while we wait for that poll to come in, um, is I have been in a very similar situation to this where I was a nurse for a few years. Um, I had a patient and let me know in the chat too, I guess I should have done this poll first. Um, 99% of you say no. So I don't know how many people have voted, but, um, I agree with 99% of you. Um, I was working, I had worked for, I was a few years into my nursing career and, it was not my patient. Um, and a, we were in the middle of a rapid response and they, the patient was seizing and I, let me pull up. See, I can't even like, even with all of this, my, I get my notes mixed up of like what med was what, um, do, 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 do. why we need like elevator music. My notes are just like arrows. I should have be, I should pull them up. <laughs> They're just like absolutely all over the place. All right. Let me, we have. Uh, man. Thanks for bearing with me. Okay, perfect. So the patient's having a seizure. They are not doing well. Um, this is turning into a code situation. It is quite uh, urgent. It's not going well. I'm panicked, um, because I, um, and this was just a very frightening one, like very high stress situation with a patient that was very, um, loved on our unit. Um, this was very sad. I was incredibly stressed. We were really busy that night. We were super short. Um, we were running around like frantic people. And then this happened and someone that I got a verbal order from a provider, they said, I need you to go pull, I forget, however many milligrams I forget now, like five of that, like IV Valium, because that's what you get. You can give Valium in a seizure to hope that the patient stops seizing. So similar to with Redondas, they said like, Hey, go pull Valium. The name of Valium as a benzodiazepine is diazepam. That's what I just had to like go and look up. I'm like, I want to make sure I get these right. Cause to this day, I confuse the names of the benzodiazepines Ativan, Xanax, Clonopin, all of them, because they all end in Pam and they all sound fairly similar and I get them confused. So they said, go get some Valium. I went to the Omnicell. The order is obviously not in because this patient 
previously had not ever seized. So we had no reason to have Valium in the medication for them. I went in and I could not for the life of me, you know, I'm panicking, think of Valium, Valium, Valium. I can't type in Valium because that's not going to be a right med. So what is the other name? I worked on the GI liver floor. We gave Ativan all the time. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like what's the Pam? What's the Pam that I need right now? So I think, oh, lorazepam. That's not the right one. It's diazepam is what I needed to type in. But I typed in lorazepam because I gave Ativan almost every single day. So I knew that one came to my brain first because I worked on a floor that did a lot of alcohol withdrawal. So I type in lorazepam. I pull it out. I draw, like I pull it, I take it into the room. I scan it because I'm going to at least scan this into the computer. So I hit that step of like scan patient, scan this. And I had a double checker um, because we had to double check verbal orders and I was going to waste some. And the, fortunately that person standing there said, Liz, that's Ativan. That's not Valium. And I was like, oh shoot. So I didn't give it, but I had that double checker. I had the scanner and I'm telling you how easy it is to miss that step and to give the wrong thing. And like, this would not have had, like the patient wouldn't have died if I had given them Ativan. But I think the story, like it's still, it shows you how easy it is when you are frantic and you are fumbling. Like, I know that those are not the same medicines. And if I had sat there for a minute, I would have, I would have been like, oh, like, hold on a minute. Like, this is not the right, give me a second. We filed an incident report and our unit are like the hospital actually changed to you were only allowed to provide oral orders with the generic name so that when I went to the, when you go to the Omni cell, the last thing you're remembering is I need to, like five of diazepam, not I need five of Valium so that you can type in indifferently. differently. Um, I was not punished. They literally just said, thank you for reporting that as a near miss. We're going to make this solution in response to that and change it so that this doesn't happen. Um, and that is my soapbox of why I think this could be really for anyone. Um, so I've seen a lot of, I'm going to kind of like hop through the chat and kind of see what we want to talk about it, but that's mostly my thing I wanted to hit on was this is the situation I will make hopefully an update video of what has happened kind of going forward. Um, as we hear more about it, but this, I just kind of like wanted to lay the foundation. I know this got a little bit, uh, that was a long explanation, but there was, I wanted to make sure the timeline like made sense. If anyone has any questions, let me know. I'm not an expert on this. I did stay up very late last night trying to become an expert and watching all of the Erica, <laughs> the nurse Erica's TikToks on it and reading a bunch of articles and watching news stories. Um, I also want to say that this is really important to get li um, insurance. So I never had um, liability insurance as a nurse. I was like, oh, my hospital will cover me because they did. And our union said, oh, like, you're fine. Like, we've got your back. And I'm sure Vanderbilt told their nurses that same exact thing was, oh, you're fine. We've got your back. But the reality of the situation is as soon as they could throw her under the bus, they did. What have the penalties been for Vanderbilt? Nothing. Um, they're not getting criminally sued. They're not getting sued. They're not getting looked into more. Um, nothing is happening to them. Further interesting point was when you look further into it, um, it's just like the whole, this is when it just gets into like mind blowing territory. I know I said I was done. And then I totally remembered this other conspiracy side, not conspiracy, but like drama side of it. Um, so Vanderbilt, the hospital, they tried to cover it up which was discovered after the fact when CMS and everyone was looking into it, they're like, what was, what did the death certificate say? Because how did you not have, you know, when you're submitting a death certificate, it's going to look real weird. If it's like, you know, died of suffocation in like a PET scan, like that is, how did you suffocate in a PET scan? That's going to look really odd. So they had two neurologists from Vanderbilt signed a death certificate saying that the patient died of natural causes 24 the 24 hours later. Um, and they just left it at that and they signed it. Do you think those people got in trouble? No, Vanderbilt was like, Oh, we'll protect you. Do you think Vanderbilt got in trouble for lying on death certificates? No. Who's getting in trouble? The nurses. Um, so this just goes to show that your hospital does not have your back. Insurance is very affordable for nurses. I want to say it's like $80 a year. Go get that. Um, I never had it, but you should have it um, because that is insanity that they are just literally shoving everything onto her and making her the scapegoat for this entire situation. Um, 
And that's, I think that's actually that. So if anyone has questions, let me know, but that's our, our main shebang. Thanks for coming and listening. And I hope one thing you can do that, um, I will link to, like I said, the nurse Erica's post and as well as the address, you can send her lawyer, um, letters. So they're hoping, so the way kind of criminal trials go is on the last day, you get to kind of make your final argument. Um, and they're hoping to come in with boxes and boxes and boxes of letters from nurses all and nursing students and family, like anyone all over the country and saying, this is awful, you know, and you can say why you think it's awful. Oh, because, um, now I don't want to become a nurse because if you're going to treat nurses this way, I never want to get sued like that. Um, if you are, I'm never going to report anything. This is just going to, you know, absolutely tank safety because there's no backing for it. Whatever you want to write, um, they're asking everybody to go and write letters, um, which I think is a great idea. And that would be a really powerful statement, I think, to bring them all in. Um, so as, as soon as possible, I sent mine out today. Um, if you could send one out, that would be awesome. You know, people are talking about it. there's hashtags on um, I stand with Redonda on um, Instagram, but just kind of making your voice be known that like as healthcare providers or just as humans, um, we do not stand for having this very obvious mistake. Yes. Punishment should be there. Like, okay, they took her nursing license. They find her, but does she need to go to jail, like to prison and get charged with these felonies? Like, no, for a mistake that she did not want to make, she's already going to be tortured enough by what happened. Um, we don't need to add to that. We do not need to make the profession even more damaging and liability. Like we, we don't need to do that. Um, so yeah. Um, Jessica, I agree. It's such a messed up case. Yes. She made several mistakes and she's admitted that she has been like an open, like ever since she's like, I really screwed up. Like I really screwed up and she's worked with them ever since. Like anytime someone wanted to do anything like that, like ask her questions, she was open to it. Um, and nurses are overworked and expectations are high and like the systems weren't there to save her. Um, Michael, I will, um, let me hold on. Let me see if I can pull up her Instagram really quick. Um, and she has it on there. We're going to see if, oh, okay. The, and then let's see if I can successfully do this. Okay. This is. Let me share. I'm not good at streaming software. <laughs> so I'm like, I can share a screen. I can absolutely do it. We're just going to have to wait a moment. Okay. This is, hopefully you can see it. Um, this is the address. Um, I think, okay. Yep. Yeah. Peter Strands, Capital View, 511th Avenue North, Suite 600, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. I will leave that also in the description. Um, and that is why, and then you can send the letters there if you would like to. Um, like I said, I did today. Mine was very ranty. Um, and very, I sent it in the cards, uh, <laughs> a card that I had gotten for my daughter's, um, fourth birthday. Uh, it's like hot pink. Cause I was like, this will stand out. This will stand out. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Let us see. Can we get rid of that? Okay. Um, and us just like huge, 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 massive. Thanks to Erica too, for going, she's covering the case there. It's awesome. Um, let me see. Rose says, I'm confused on why people don't think nurses deserve any responsibility or accountability. Yes, it was a mistake, but it was a serious mistake and someone trusted her with their life, but it was not on purpose. You know what I mean? And like, if you, if you, we want to criminally charge people for making a mistake, yes, it was horrible. She's going to be tortured with that for the rest of her life. People die all the time. The number one cause of death, like in hospitals, I think is patient error is provider error. This is something that happens all the time because healthcare workers are human. We are not perfect. No one would go into this profession if of healthcare at all. If people said, as soon as you mess up, you're going to jail, no one would go in because we're all going to mess up. I have messed up. I have <laughs> like, I, that was a near miss that I shared with you earlier. Um, 
like here, we'll put in the chat. If you're a healthcare worker, have you ever made an actual med error? I've made actual med errors, like where I gave the wrong medication, where I've, I've, as a nurse practitioner, I have done the wrong thing. And I've had to go back and be like, oh my gosh, like, oops, okay, we're going to pull back. This is how we're going to fix it. But as long as you can go back and have that honest communication, deaths are horrific, obviously very, very horrific. It was 96% by the way, sorry, ADHD Liz coming in 95% of people. There were 166 votes. 95% of people said, no, she should not be charged. And 4% said, yes, she should be charged. Um, that doesn't add up to a hundred. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, have you ever made a med error? We'll ask. Um, I certainly have. Um, and if we charge people like it, we cannot, look at, I know it sounds bad, but you can't charge based on the outcome. What if like that tiny mistake, you know what I mean? Like, yes, there needs to be some kind of a punishment, but it doesn't need to be prison. It can be, Hey, you lose your license. Hey, you have to do this remediation. Hey, you need to do X, Y, and Z, but it, no, no. (laughs) Um, it doesn't need to be all of that. Um, and so, uh, mom and nurse, um, hi, I appreciate you coming to all my lives. Vec and all paralytics are in the fridge in a box away from the other meds. She said, so I, like I said, I've never given a Vec. Um, and this is something that a lot of people have said is, Hey, you have to reconstitute Vec and you don't have to reconcept Versed, uh, reconstitute Versed. So that's like mixing it in with vials. Like it's a powder and you would have to mix it up. Um, she didn't, I don't know if she's talked about like, is it in a fridge? Was it away from everything? I'm assuming that if it's always kept in a fridge in a box, like that, that's how it is. She did say she was unfamiliar with both meds. Someone said like, oh, you, but you would give in Versed a few days before. And she was like, I was frazzled. I obviously made an epic mistake. Um, and she wasn't sure, which is another thing was she didn't know if maybe it was just a different type because the pharmacy is constantly switching things up, which I can understand because the pharmacy does constantly switch things up. So if you're panicked, I could understand why if she was, you know, she could have thought like, oh, this all like, this is weird, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Who of us haven't done that? I mean, maybe I'm the only one, but like, I know I've probably done things where I'm like this probably like, uh, I'm going to make this make sense because it's what I need to make sense in this moment. Um, Dave said, I give Vec almost every day. It has to be kept in powder form because it's not stable in liquid form. Yeah. So she was just unfamiliar with it. So she had never given Vec. She had said she gave the other medicine very few times. So she would have no baseline to know. Like if you give something like Versed all the time, you know, like, oh, this is like, I have never reconstituted this. This is really weird. Like, let me look and double check on it. She didn't know because she's never done it a bunch. Um, she's rushed. Like she has all those other things going on. So I don't think that's like the one thing where people could be like, well, how dare you not know it wasn't reconstituted or it was in this different fridge friends. I don't, I never remembered. It took me forever to remember. Like, obviously this is a, a more advanced, like a more hardcore med, but like, I never remembered if things were in the fridge, you could have told me like, Hey, like that's actually in the fridge. And I've been like, okay, that's fine. Um, and it's just like, it's, I don't think we should harp on this. She has admitted this was an epic, epic error. I am so sorry. Um, I don't know if we need to harp on like, how could you not know? Cause she didn't know, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, she didn't know. So let's look at it as a situation of what can we learn from it versus how should we punish her? Ash is right. They should never have been in the same cabinet. There should have been a different override feature to be like, whoa, friend, like you're about to do something like real, real, real serious you know, that this is not going to be good. Um, let me see the hospital, um, is, and should be responsible for all the lapses and safeguards, no scanner, not enough pharmacists, exact, et cetera. Exactly. Like why is nothing happening? Um, why is nothing happening to the hospital or the people who falsely wrote things on the death certificates who I also, um, one of the things I didn't find this, I didn't look into this part, but Erica had said in her things that, um, one of the people who had signed the death certificate, making up the false reason of, uh, acts like the, the death was natural causes also wrote another death certificate for a different patient and said natural causes when they actually died of a nicked, I think carotid in surgery. So interesting. (laughs) 
interesting. Um, Mama nurse, I think two years, I think is what I know she had worked in the, that unit, I think for two years. Um, and what I had been reading was, you know, if she, that she, like, I don't know how you worked on the neuro ICU for two years and not given Versed, but I don't know how all of that, you know, works. Um, but she did say she was like unfamiliar with it and they were able to prove that like she had really very rarely, I think like two or three times in her entire time there was how often she had given Versed. So that is not very much. And that is certainly not enough that at least I personally would be like, I know exactly how this is given. <laughs> it's not enough. Um, Nani said, I'm getting insurance ASAP. Do it, do it. Um, she had been a nurse since 2015. Okay. So two years, which is not very long. That's like barely long enough to kind of get your head above water. At least I think, um, Michael said, can you talk a little bit more about the implication of what this will mean for all healthcare providers? If she's convicted, I per I'm not a lawyer, like I said, but I personally feel like this is going to open up the gates to have more people tried criminally when they make mistakes, you know, because if they're going to be able to look back at this and be like, Hey, you did this. And now you're like that caused death. So now every time someone makes an error at work, then you can get criminally charged as if you tried to like murder them or it's homicide versus it being like, Hey, this was a horrible thing that happened. Let's learn from it. But you still get to keep doing your job because you're a human and you're going to make mistakes. Um, like that's how it's going to change is it's going to be, people aren't going to want to go into the profession. Um, because if you mess up, you lose everything. People are not going to want to admit their mistakes because if they fess up, then they know their hospital is not going to back them. They know that they can go to prison, um, and get felonies. I think it's just going to have a, like a huge trickle down effect of making conditions more unsafe. Um, like finding magic said, I will not go back to the bedside if she's convicted. Yeah. Like I would not return to practice ever as a nurse practitioner, if she's convicted, because I know at some point in my career, I am probably going to do something that is going to have pretty awful outcomes. Like that's not that good to think about. And it like constantly weighs on me as a human. Like that was hard when I, especially when I transitioned into a provider, um, like uh, that's rough, um, that you kind of have to realize like my actions might affect someone negatively, but like, I don't want to be put in a situation where that could be a felony. You know what I mean? Like that's insane. Um, we, yeah, it's kind of goes back to the superhero mentality. I did a whole video about that. If you want to watch it recently about like, we're just people, we're not superheroes. We didn't sign up for this. Like we are literally just trying to go to work and then come home and live our actual life because work is not our life. Um, Sierra said, I don't think she's an ICU nurse. Sorry. Yeah. I have no idea. I think she said she was, I don't honestly know. I think she, I don't know anything about that. Um, but I agree. It's interesting that she didn't, had only given her said like three or four times, um, if she worked in the ICU. Um, I am not, Aaron said, I'm not a nurse. An honest question here. Is it common to override so many safety checks, looking up the drug, not scanning, not having to double check? Um, yeah. So depending on the situation, um, and depending on the situation, and I talked about this, I'll timestamp it and we can kind of go over it, but kind of as a brief synopsis, depending on the situation. So in this situation, um, the computer was not talking to the machine that gives out the medicine. So, and it was also like a rapid order. So something was ordered. So even if it had updated, there was no time in emergency situations. It's very, very common to override because nothing has been checked a lot. Um, depending on how, uh, overwhelmed your pharmacist is very, very common to override because the pharmacist is not going to have time to verify it, which gives the computer the permission to give it to you. Um, so I would say overriding, I overrode a lot, um, because our pharmacist was just very overwhelmed. Um, and usually when we needed those meds, we needed them now. So I overrode probably like, I don't know. I don't want to say once a day, but it was a lot. Like I overrode it a lot. Um, uh, looking at the drug, not scanning that was less, but that was scanning became much more of a thing. Um, uh, like I would say most of the time you scan as long as you can scan if you can. Um, but there was no scanner in the department where she was giving the medicine. So that wasn't her fault. Um, and not having a double check. I don't know what, like I would have, I always liked people to double check, um, 
like exactly for the reason why when I made my oops was if it was a verbal order or if it was a emergency medicine, I just liked people to look at it with me and be like, this is right. This is right. Um, so, but that might not be mandated by her facility. So like kind of an answer overriding is very normal. Um, she should have looked at the drug. She should have looked at the label. That was not ideal. Um, that was a mistake. Not scanning was not her fault. Um, and not having a double check. I don't know. Cause I don't know the situation, um, there. Oh, thank you, Caroline for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, my dad works at Vanderbilt and worked with Redonda in the critical care unit. Okay. So she did work in the ICU. If you have any insights that you want to share about like anything he said about her, I think we, I mean, love that. I mean, that obviously doesn't affect, um, that doesn't affect anything that like that would change the trial. But I think it would just be, I've heard she's like very apologetic, very, very like just devastated over it as any of us, I think would be if like, I just cannot imagine this is probably, you know, I feel like there's a lot of other cases where people will use the internet version, um, unalive themselves after they cause a medical error like this. Like, I just imagine that this is an huge thing that is going to weigh on her for the rest of her life, whether she gets, um, convicted or not. Um, MT said, no, it's not the norm to pass over safety checks. I mean, yeah, we kind of just talked about, it's like the setting was weird where, you know, her hospital wasn't setting her up for success in this specific situation. Um, yeah, it's just, ugh. um, uncle Sam said in the, um, in the ED, we override everything. We only have two scanners in the whole department. How many beds do you have? because that is a hot mess. Casey said, I'm an ED nurse and we override a lot. Um, I'm betting that's because there's probably a lot of verbal orders. There's a ton of medicines constantly going in the ER because you're having all acute things happen, you know, on the floor orders are not constantly going in. They kind of go in at rounds. And then if something pops up, um, that happens, but in the ER, in the emergency department, people are, it's like a revolving door, you know, people are constantly coming in. So there would be so, so many, um, there'd be so many meds. So I imagine that you would have to override all the time because you probably have your own pharmacist and they cannot keep up with you. Um, my Casey said, I don't know about your hospital, but mine has a lot of computers that don't always work. The scanners are not always in working condition. Our scanners broke all the time. I will say that. Um, that's a really good point that I actually hadn't interestingly thought about our scanners broke all the time. We constantly had to not scan because our scanners were broken and then we would get in trouble and then management would come and they're like, why your scanning rate is like horrific. And you're like, well, you should probably fix your scanners. <laughs> and that was a problem. Um, man, I didn't think of that earlier. Yeah. Our scanners were always broken too. Um, Aaron, it is a giant mess. It is such a giant mess. Um, why didn't she draw up and double verify before she left the floor? I don't know. That's a good question too. That is a good question. Maybe she thought that there would be a scanner and it seemed like this was a new situation for her. So like, because she didn't know you're supposed to stay, she didn't know all this other stuff. Maybe she thought that like, I thought this the first time I went down to radiology was, oh, there's going to be nurses down there. Like they're going to, there's going to be help down there. And there's no one, there's the radiology text. They can't verify. Um, the first time, like, so maybe she went down and she thought there would be nurses down there. I don't know, but I think it goes back to, you know, we can ask, why didn't she do this? Why didn't she do this? Why didn't she do this until we're like blue in the face? But the thing that it comes down to is she made a mistake. It was not on purpose. Um, and are we going to allow her to like, are, is she going to be criminally charged for this? And is that going to play over into all of healthcare? Are we going to be criminally charged for making oopsies at our jobs where we are overworked and stressed? Um, and it was obviously not on purpose. Um, uh, my heart breaks for her. I can only imagine. I know I can't, I can't, I cannot imagine this. So like the psychological toll, um, that that will take on her. Um, so here I said before I was allowed to work in the ICU, I had to take hours and weeks of ECHCO modules and tests and follow up precept for, for three months. And I think different places are just different. I don't know what their rules are. Um, I'm glad your experience is, was like that though. Um, you know, because yeah, we need to emphasize more like how to prevent these things. Right. Ali, um, a different scenario, but I'm a social worker and a client's death, um, weighs in me every day for sure. For sure. Um, also social work. I don't know how you do it. 
thank goodness that you are there. I feel like social work, we just dump everything on you. We're like, that sounds like a social worker problem. And you just swoop in and you, you fix things and you're magical and I appreciate you and thank you for doing what you do. Um, but yeah, I think I agree. I feel like you kind of in, in healthcare in general, just kind of stuff all of, I work the first unit I worked on was very, very fatality heavy. Um, and every now and then, like even in life now, it just like comes and it hits you and you're like, I remember a lot of death and that is heavy. I like, I just can't imagine being so causally linked to it, even if it was a mistake, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, um, I have been to their floor at, uh, Vandy many times. I see how the mistakes can be made. There's a lot going on there. It's very overwhelming to see. sounds like it's a huge medical center. So this is someone who's, um, knew someone who worked with her. It's chaotic. That's not going to lead anyone into making their best choices. You know, I am a testament to that. And, um, 76% of you are as well, who have said you've made a med error. And I'm betting that it happened on a day where things were a little bit crazy and you weren't quite thinking the way your perfect nursing student self thought they were. Um, I am a current nursing student Are the five rights, a common thing caught at all school programs. Yeah. But, um, in reality, you know, it's, should she have looked at the name of it? Yeah, for sure. Um, but you don't do it like it's just performed differently. You know, when you're there, you're just like, I'm going to scan your wristband. I'm going to do this. You don't look into the meds, honestly, as much as you do when you're in nursing school, because you have too many things going on. So yes, the five rights, I'm sure she knew her five rights. I'm sure, you know, she didn't have an order to go off of because remember the order was not in the computer was not talking to the Pixis. She didn't have a computer. So she didn't even have a way to like verify the two. So that was another way that the hospital was just kind of like failing her there. Um, how are we supposed to make patients feel safe when they see stories like this? So this is actually interesting um, in that I don't think we necessarily need to, you know, um, which might be an unpopular opinion, but I think talking to patients and literally saying like, I am doing the best that I possibly can um, reassuring them in that way. And then saying like, but I have a lot going on and I wish I could spend more time with you or something like, um, you know, if you don't want to blame the hospital again, Erica had said something about, um, you know, going back to the, um, hospitals that are mandating overtime, the one in Las Vegas that I had talked about before saying, if I look tired, I am like, I think we cover up for hospital systems and healthcare so much in general. And I really think that as awful as it is at some point you have to have some accountability. Like you have to just be honest and be like, you know, this is scary and more, you know, I, I have had conversations with patients where I've been like, yeah, I've seen more errors happen. Um, because we just, we're stretched so much thinner. Um, you have to be careful how you say it because your institution can come after you. But I've had those conversations with my patients in primary care as a nurse practitioner of like, I wish I could spend more time with you. I wish I could. I wish I could have like super long appointments. I wish we could, I wish you could come in all the time and that you could afford to do this, but like, that's not the system we're working in. So we just have to kind of figure it out. But patients, we don't tell them anything and the hospitals brush it under the rug or they try to cover it up. So patients have no idea that all of this is happening under the water. You know, on the top, it looks like fairly smooth going with like little cute ripples. Um, and that's why I'm really hoping that this case kind of gets outside of the healthcare community because this can kind of show like the chaos that is underneath the water that the hospitals are covering up because we keep pumping out the story. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. It's just like with the whole, uh, pandemic thing. Um, we weren't allowed to wear masks in the beginning because it would scare the patients. Maybe we should scare the patients because maybe if the patients are a little bit scared, they'll complain. And since hospitals and healthcare is such a customer service based thing, maybe then we would see some action. You know what I mean? Um, maybe if we stop pretending like everything is fine, the whole farce will be up. Um, there's more healthcare workers than there are administrators, right? So I'm not saying I want to start a revolution over here, but I kind of don't not want to start a revolution. You know what I mean? Um, about just being honest and letting people see what's really going on, which is hard. I mean, as a patient, that would totally suck to hear, but 
I would never let my loved one go into a hospital by themselves ever, 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 and ever. Like, obviously if you're banned from going in, that's different, but like, no, after seeing how hospitals work on the inside, I'm like, nope. Every time anyone I love has been there, I'm like, I'll be there. <laughs> I'm not leaving your chair. <laughs> I'm not even going to shower. I'm just going to be right here. Um, Mora, exactly. We need to look at why this happened and look at systemic issues as to why this error occurred rather than focusing on one person. Exactly. Which is where that whole, whole concept of just culture comes back in and saying like, let's not focus on nitpicky one thing. Let's look at why it happened and how we can fix it. Um, <laughs> let's criminally charge the IT guy who made this scanner too while we're at it. Like for real, let's... <laughs> why isn't it all this worked out? Um, literally my heart hurt and brain hurt hearing the story prayers for her and her family and the loss of that love. Absolutely. I mean, it's just so devastating on all accounts. Her family has actually, her family has nothing to do with, um, the loss, the, her being sued. Actually, her family has come out and has said, um, I should have gotten a clip and put it in here that her mom, they don't think their mom would want this. Um, it was a 75 year old woman that passed away. They said they do not think their mom, that their mom would want this and they do not want her to be criminally prosecuted. So it's not the family that is doing this. The family just wanted systems to be in place. And the family is really angry that Vanderbilt covered it up and didn't immediately see this and be like, Hey, here are what we are going to do to fix it. This happened. This will never happen to anyone again. We are so, so, so sorry that this happened to your mother, which is how medical mistakes are supposed to be handled. You know, in NP school, they teach you if you make a mistake, more likely when you make a mistake, own up to it, tell the patient, don't try to skirt around it. Be like, Hey, this happened. It wasn't supposed to happen. This other thing should have happened. Here is what I have done in order so that this will not ever happen again. And apologize. Be like, I am so sorry that this happened to you. And here's what I'm doing to fix it. Don't make excuses. Just say this happened. This is what we're doing to fix it. That has been shown to be the thing that gets you sued the least. Um, <laughs> that's how they framed it in school. Um, but also just like that people feel the most justified with, cause they said like nothing, this lawsuit will never bring their mom back. Um, all it's going to do is ruin another life and they don't want that. So I thought that was interesting that the family, does not want this. Um, Alana said, this is definitely not a homicide case at the very least it's professional negligence. Exactly. So I, I could see how, if they were coming at it from some kind of a loss of license or some kind of remediation is needed or, Hey, you know, you maybe can't work in this specific scene, something like that, but not a homicide case. Um, uh, Caroline, this is, um, her dad works with, um, Redonda, my dad has made errors too. He said Redonda was the sweetest soul and amazing to work with. She was amazing in her patients and sweet and coworkers. Mandy has a huge place. Um, lots of room for mistakes. Oh, it makes it harder when she's like nice, you know, like it shouldn't, but it does. Um, yeah. And D Kelly, the family is against her being crippling charged. They do not want that to happen. Um, the answer isn't pitting doctors and nurses against each other. It's a systemic issue and the hospitals need to do better and take care of their healthcare providers. Very true. Very, very true. Um, and the hospitals really need to do, but I feel like nurses really get the shaft on this one because the hospitals will defend. It's like kind of, they will, they're more likely to defend healthcare providers rather than nurses because healthcare providers still make them money. Um, and that lawsuit is going to be a whole lot different than just, you know, they're pretty quick to just fire a nurse and be like, well, we'll fill that one. <laughs> fill that little hole you made right there and it's gonna be fine. Um, let me see, go nurse Luke's good point. Maybe if the patient public knew how common mistakes were, they would realize they aren't made with malicious intent. Exactly. And I don't know how anyone would think this was made with malicious intent. Like, I don't know. I do not know. Um, as a nurse, you have to MT said as a nurse, you have to have your own back though and double check yourself. Yeah, for sure. And she has admitted that, that she made a mistake. Um, but also there were a lot of system failures that were here. They kind of loved this. Um, if Rain said I was deciding between a career in mechanical engineering or being a nurse, but this case makes me not want to be a nurse. I don't blame you. I've seen lots of messages in my inbox on Instagram today. Um, that <laughs> where people were like, actually, I'm going to nope out of here and go over here where I'm not going to be criminally charged when I make an error. Mom and nurse say, yep. I said the same thing. I hate the thought of my loved one being in a hospital. Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. Um, 
Sierra said, I'm starting to really see why it's a serious offense. The fact that her order was written down on paper um, is when you do quadruple check and ask others. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's like, it's not a non-serious situation. Um, the whole thing is just a mess. Um, and she said, as Sierra said, as she admitted she was unfamiliar with the drug and never che double checked. Think about it. And I totally agree. Like, she made a mistake, which she has admitted. Um, but who among us, I guess, is my counter argument is who among us haven't made a mistake when we're frazzled and trying to help. Um, and you know, at the other end of the line, someone is suffering and you just want to go and help them. Like her intent, I think was to help not to harm. And that's what we have to look at it, um, from instead of, you know, if she wasn't accepting blame, I think this would also be totally different. But if she was standing here being like, this was not my fault at all, I think the situation would be a little bit different, you know, then we would be saying like, <laughs> friend, like, let's find all the, like, let me show you why you, you bear responsibility in this. But she has always said, I take full responsibility. The problem being here is that Vanderbilt was like, great. Like you take all the responsibility. We're not going to talk about anything that we did wrong either. Bye. Your life's gone. Like, that's the part that's not fine. Oh, friends, what a freaking mess. Um, Cher said, every nurse I know agrees she shouldn't be criminally charged. Every single one of us could see ourselves in that same position. Exactly. So that's why we're going to write letters, write letters um, and share to this address about how you feel about it. Um, and they're going to take them into court on the closing day and talk about it. Um, Alyssa, it is a hot mess express. You probably, you just don't, uh, you've already dealt with, you know, your state, Wisconsin had their moment. You don't need to, this is, this is a lot. This is not good for mental health. Not good at all. Um, and my, my shoes that I'm guessing to air as human is not, not Todd widespread in nursing. No. Um, it's more like to air as death. They're like, Hey, like, like, look, well, I guess that I shouldn't say that in this case because of the situation, but they're not kind to errors. They act like it's always the end of the world. Um, mom and nurse. Hey, Alyssa all day. I watch your channel all the time. Alyssa's the best. Alyssa is my, my YouTube BFF. Um, and I miss her <laughs> when my children are older and scream less. I'm going to go visit her and it's going to be a great time. Um, Vanderbilt hasn't changed. Scanners still don't work. So many travel nurses and plow. The place is a hot mess. Great. Um, I also heard today from watching heard. <laughs> I'm like, I talk about Erica as if she's like my friend. She like probably has no idea who I am. Um, she was saying in her TikToks today uh, that the they were having Vanderbilt nurses testify in the court case and um, with the lawyers sitting there taking notes from Vanderbilt. So if you feel, and then they were saying like, oh, these are honest testimonies to be like, oh, this never happens. My employment is like, my employer is great with, you know, what are you going to say when you're sitting there like this? You're probably going to say, oh, it's fine. It's great. When your employer's writing down your name. Oh, so that's where we are. Um, recap very briefly. Can you recap again what happened? Um, Redonda Vaughn is a uh, was a registered nurse in 2017. She pulled a, she gave the wrong medication. She was supposed to give a anti-anxiety, like a, um, anti, uh, anxiety. There's a different word for it. I can't think of it. Relaxation medication. Um, and con like to make you less anxious. And she gave a, uh, paralytic. Um, there was a confusion with the name. She went to go type and she overrode the system. She pulled out the medication. There were a lot of things that she did wrong. There were a lot of safety things that the hospital did not provide her with. She gave the medication and the patient died. Um, Vanderbilt, the hospital she worked for, tried to brush it under the rug and did not want to Alyssa. Yeah. It's the Versed versus vet case. Um, it got postponed. It was, this happened in 2017, but because of the pandemic, it got pushed back three years. Um, at least four years, five years. Holy cow. 2017 was five years ago. I need to go have a drink. Um, but they, um, Vanderbilt, they paid off the family. They tried to cover it up. They said that it was of natural causes. Someone tipped off CMS like a year later, uh, almost a year later and said, Hey, this is actually what happened. They failed to report it. Um, at which point Vanderbilt said, Oh, you're right. We didn't report that. Um, yep, this happened. CMS announced it. 
they decided they were, the state is criminally suing her, criminally charging her. So they're charging her with, um, involuntary, what was it? Accidental manslaughter or in something negligent homicide. I probably shouldn't be allowed to talk about things on the internet, <laughs> especially it's past my bedtime. Got to go to bed at 10, especially since my children scream on it. Reckless homicide and impaired adult abuse. Um, uh, and she is in trial currently for that. Her nursing license was revoked and we typically do not, um, charge people reckless homicide. Thank you, Michael. We typically do not charge people with, um, criminal suits in healthcare. We usually say, Hey, that was really bad. Let's maybe think about taking your license away and finding you. We don't send them to prison for making an error. And that is the synopsis of it. Um, and Helena, there was no computer. That is part of the problem. That was part of the systems problem, um, that was going on. Uh, Alyssa, oh yeah, Alyssa was a, a lot of people have been saying that. Um, I remember this. I was in school and reconsidered becoming a nurse because of it. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are going to reconsider becoming a nurse or staying as a nurse or any healthcare professional if she actually gets convicted. Because no, thank you. I do not need to be criminally prosecuted for a mistake. So if this gets criminally prosecuted, Alyssa, um, I guess I have to move to Wisconsin and I have to start working for your soap and lotion company. So I look forward to that. Um, I'll come and live in your basement. Get ready. Let's go. Perfect. Um, and she also said, we're going to go on a tropical vacation one day, which is going to be beautiful and wonderful. And we might not ever come back. So <laughs> There's my friendship with Alyssa. Um, go follow her channel, Melissa All Day. It's great. It's excellent. Um, a lady of many talents. She's the best. Um, isn't there an alert on the computer or something giving you of that sort? Um, there was no computer where she went to go sign it. So there was no scanner. So that second safety guard, it should have warned her when she pulled it from the um, OmniCell, but she is saying that warning did not come up. The system was also updating and there were a lot of errors with it and they were having to override all meds because the electronic health record was brand new and the computer and the med dispenser were not talking to one another. So another thing that went wrong, I wish the school of nursing for Vanderbilt would have addressed this with us. Oh, so you went to Vanderbilt as a student. They have really only mentioned it once and told us how vital it is to do our checks. Huh? That is interesting. Oh, I should have seen if I, anybody does go to Vandy and I could have reached out to them to see how they do phrase it, which is shocking to me that they have not talked about it. So I went to Michigan state, a very different direction. Um, when the whole, um, essay thing was happening with the doctor there, I'm not going to use actual words because then YouTube, um, demonetize, they, they sh don't show this video to anyone. Um, and we were very heavily coached on, and there were a lot of in-service things and a lot of different things that were given to us of like, how to make sure, like, has this happened to you? How to make sure this never happens to anyone else? A very similar, not involving death, but like a large scandal um, that went on. Uh, and we were very, it was very often brought up. So I'm very surprised, honestly, that they did not. I wonder if now that it's out in the news and people are talking about it, I wonder if people will, if they'll coach you differently. Because we were honestly coached when that happened, they were like, this is how you respond to your friends. When they ask you about it, here's what we're doing to fix it. Um, it was interesting. Um, Kimberly said I'm five months from graduation and have student set. So there's no going back now. <laughs> so many different options in nursing, so many where you don't have to give medications and you don't have to get sued. Um, and there's also lots of hospitals where there are safeguards, you know, you just want to find the ones that are safe. And if we keep talking about this, um, I'm hoping that like we had talked about earlier, if we keep talking about this and how this is so common, um, you know, that this is something that happens and we need to figure out solutions and not be punitive. U S law equals common law, common law equals precedent. Precedent is it equals if we did it before we can do it again and expand it. And that is what makes this case so terrifying for all nurses and healthcare workers. I think that was very well summarized and maybe we should end it right about on there. Um, 72% of people, let's go check our poll. So we have end poll. Um, let's see, 72% of people said they did make an error. And if, <laughs> there are people saying only 72%, the rest are chickens. Cause I think pretty much all of us have made, made errors. Um, 
<laughs> Alyssa, um, should we sweet? I'll save her future plans for another day. Thoughts on malpractice insurance, can of worms. I know I would get it now. I, I didn't have it. Like I said, I didn't have it as a nurse. Cause I was like, Oh, my hospital has it. And like, we have a union and they said they were great and everything. I would absolutely have it now because that hospital is hospitals are showing you exactly who they're protecting. Even if they have malpractice insurance for you, that lawyer is not on your side since they have thrown her to the wolves. Um, obviously they are not representing her. Um, she has, I believe a, um, like just a DA, um, <laughs> 20% of the people are liars. 28% of the people are new nurses two days in. Um, Oh, interesting. So malpractice insurance, I would recommend getting, I think it's fairly affordable for nurses, like $80 a year, something very affordable. However, maybe they've been a nurse for two minutes. Um, Michael said, fun fact, malpractice insurance does not cover you in a criminal case, in a criminal case, only a civil case. That is very interesting. And as we had talked about, almost all healthcare cases are always criminal where you get a fine a slap on the wrist and they maybe take your license away huh but they don't cover you at all in criminal cases so that would be a different thing that maybe malpractice insurance would have to start trying to cover you for criminal cases if they got it approved however i'm just not going to acknowledge that this even might end up in a conviction because i can't mentally go there um if you're a nurse um i appreciate all of you saying that <laughs> After I just talked about my med error on the internet to lots of people, um, if a lot of people are like, if you answered, no, you're not an actual nurse, um, problem. So this is why the case is a huge deal. Michael, thank you for that little nugget of info. Maybe you should be the one presenting this <laughs> instead of me. I feel like Michael's just like given me all the information this entire time. So, uh, if you want to give our next update video, go for it, Michael, I will, I'll just hand things right over to you. Um, Maura Wiley answered no, because I'm still a student. Okay. Well, that gives me some hope. Um, can you give me a list of what I can do as a nurse? that's not bedside. I'm a new grad and I'm starting my job soon. I'm terrified of killing a patient and ending up in this position. Um, I do want to reassure you that, um, all of us, I think have had this fear, um, and that fear is not necessarily a bad thing. I still carry that fear of harming people to this day. And it keeps you very responsive. <laughs> you know, you want to check things, you're just nervous. Um, there are lots of Instagram accounts of, um, you can Google too. Just, um, I'm not like an expert on all of the other, um, you know, jobs that are non-bedside. So I don't want to say something and have it be totally wrong. But if you Google like non-bedside nursing jobs, but also just know that this is very normal. I used to be petrified. I cried every day on my way into work for six months as a new nurse. Cause I was convinced I was going to harm someone. Um, and I was terrified. Like I was just petrified. That does get a lot better as you get more confident and you learn like what to do, you know, to take the steps, even when it seems monotonous, like someone to talk about the five rights, you know, like doing whatever steps you need to do when you're doing things to make sure you're asking biggest things, honestly, are just like doing things the same way every single time, not skipping steps, even when you're frazzled, even when people are yelling at you, even when it just seems impossible that you need to take these extra steps, doing it every time and always knowing, listening to your gut when it's like, I'm not sure this is right and double checking and asking for help. Um, cause your gut is going to be pretty good. Igno knowing what you know and what you don't know is going to be the biggest thing. And about six months to a year in, you're going to hit that and you're going to be like, Oh, I don't know this. And you realize it's okay to not know things and that asking questions is totally fine. Um, but having a little bit of fear is there. And, but I promise you that like, this is coming at a horrible time for you if you are new, because you're seeing this horrible outcome of this person being punished like this. But do know that like, this is very, very normal what you're feeling right now. Not that that makes it okay. But like, I think we've probably all been there. Um, like Alyssa is saying, we're all afraid of harming a patient, which is why this case is just a big deal. We do our best, but we also are all human. Yeah, so this is a normal fear. I don't want you to feel like everyone else is out there being like, Oh, like, I'm totally fine with this. Um, and can you do more of these lives? I'm going, I'm doing, been doing, trying to do more. Yes. I should just answer with yes. If you have ever anything, I'm trying to do lives for like topical healthcare type things like that are more like, oh, we can have really great discussion in the chat. Like we're having now and then saving. Um, so if you ever see anything that you want me to like react to, or like 
something in the kind of like this, it's like a, an up-to-date event. I covered the, um, like theta care thing in Wisconsin like this. I did the, um, what was the one that just came out with the mandatory overtime and the letter in Nevada where the nurse manager blamed the people who worked there for not volunteering more talked about that. So like I'm doing those, but if you ever have any, someone actually recommended that I cover, this was how I dived into all of it. So if anyone ever has any recommendations of things like you want to talk about kind of as a group, um, I love doing these as lives because you get so many different insights and you guys have been awesome with like chatting and like, I obviously like Michael, (laughs) just learn everything from you guys as I'm doing these. Um, and it's great. So yeah. And thanks everyone for coming to them because they're so much more fun when everyone comes and it's like interactive and it's just, it's just the best. Um, so I appreciate all of you and thanks for being here. Um, uh, let me see. Yeah. Kimberly Davis said, it's crazy to me. We all go into nursing to help people, but we constantly have someone waiting for us to mess up. That is how it feels like quite a lot. Um, of the time. Uh, Lola, there's a class in nursing school that talks about some court cases so people can see what the nurse, um, the nurses are getting there. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, I wish we had had that. Um, let me see. We had that actually in interestingly. So I was an education major at one point for a brief time and we had to take as elementary education majors. Um, we had to take an educational law class where we learned about, um, different court cases in education. So that's like, why don't we have to take a nursing law class? That's a really good point. (laughs) Like let's, let's do that. Um, let's see. Dave said, I do appreciate the nuanced discussion on this topic. Oh, thanks. Thanks for being here. I appreciate all of your discussion as well. Um, I think it's good. We get a lot of different opinions when we do stuff like this. Um, and everyone's been really nice, which I'm very, very pleasantly surprised with unless, um, uh, my sister who has blocking power. I don't think she's been blocking people like crazy unless she has, and <laughs> she's just keeping out all the trolls. Um, I'm always fine with different opinions as long as they're respectful. Um, I had to take legal aspects of nursing. Oh, that's good. I like that. They included that. I like that. We need more of that. Um, let's see. Sierra said, I love these live chats. So awesome. Unfortunate topic, but I love meeting with you guys. I know, I know it is an unfortunate topic. We should probably do some sometimes that are just like palate cleansers and just a chat maybe we should start implementing those. Um, I love doing the lives. My problem lies on the other side of that door because my humans don't love it. (laughs) My humans, my little humans have a lot of feelings. Okay, friends, I think we're going to wrap things up. I will come back, um, go check out, um, the nurse Erica's Instagram, her TikTok. Um, I will hopefully come and be able to do an update on it. Hopefully the update, well, I will come and do an update on it and we'll do it live. Hopefully the update is that nothing ever, nothing came of it that they were like, Hey, this isn't something we should criminally prosecute. We went and we watched nurse Liz's live about this and she's absolutely right. And, um, there we go. So maybe we'll just send this to the lawyer and be like, here you go. Just play this. Because I mean, if anybody knows about the law, it's definitely me (laughs) who like had to look up what prosecutioner or prosecutor was expert expert here. Palette cleanser wine with Alyssa. Perfect. Perfect. We're going to start doing dates nights guys. I know you didn't necessarily need to know about Alyssa and I's friendship, but we're going to do zoom wine day nights. All right, friends. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you for coming and just discussing. Um, this was very helpful and I think I, I just appreciate you. All right, friends, I will see you on the update. So stay tuned make sure your notification bell thing is on. Um, if we're, uh, meeting for the first time, subscribe, do all those things. Um, what do you think about, oh, um, Lashley, what do I think about making TikTok in the workplace? If it's on your break, it's fine. Or if it's totally dead at night shift, do you friend, do you, um, like people, I mean, as long as like, there's not chaos happening, just do you, and don't, I mean, guard HIPAA, be careful with that, but I, I don't know. I'm much more relaxed about those things. Thanks friends for being here. Um, If you want to see any of the other things that I've talked about recently that are kind of more like this in terms of like things that are happening in the in the, I wanted to say modern day, but that was the wrong terms, current events in the nursing sphere. Uh, you can go check out this whole playlist. It's called NP reacts. And if you have anything you want me to react to and talk about, 
then just send it on over to me. I appreciate you being here. I think I've said that 12 times. Have a delightful night. I'm going to go to bed. I clearly need to. <laughs> Bye, friends.